Well, here I am two days after the first video. If you haven't seen the first video, go back and have a look. And it'll give you an idea of what I'm doing here today. It's amazing how much this water has come up in just two days. It's, it's certainly rising a lot faster than I had anticipated. That righty doppernera nest that I showed you in that first video, the intermediate size righty doppernera, their nest was approximately two meters on the other side of that post. Which now is well and truly underwater. So they were doing the right thing by moving. But interestingly enough, yesterday I came here and I saw an ant that I didn't see at all that I can recall the day before. And that was Campanotus consabrinus. Quite a large ant. This Campanotus consabrinus, they were in very large numbers. I, I, I don't think I've seen a Campanotus in those sort of numbers before. They were just everywhere. And I think the reason they were so mobile was because I noticed they had a nest just the other side of that post yesterday that was starting to become wet. And so they were moving out. And it was probably about nine o'clock in the morning and they were just thick. And I couldn't film them very close because they just started climbing up near. They were very, very aggressive. And large numbers of them, and they're quite a large ant. I mean, the, the, the major ant is probably something like the size of an inch ant, which are actually really quite big and, and quite robust. And no problem at all, they just want to climb up on you which is completely opposite to, say, Iridomermics. Iridomermics are just, like, go crazy on the ground, but they don't normally climb on you. But these Campanotus, oh, I couldn't stand there for any more than about 10 or 15 seconds, and I had, like, half a dozen up my pants. And they were all carrying eggs, larvae and stuff, all moving their progeny away from that wet area. So last night, I came down here to have a look at Campanotus consabrinus. I wanted to see what they were doing after yesterday's incredibly busy activity. And I discovered they have numerous holes all the way up to that hill. And they were busy up and down. So it seems as though, in a similar manner to Iridomermix, they have multiple nests, multiple nest entrances, just obscure. You can't see them very easily. It's a single hole in the ground. There's nothing obvious about it, so unless you see the ants, you won't see them. And they were just busy up and down, which is what campanotus normally do. They're normally busy at night. So that area where they were moving from yesterday is now flooded. So similar to Iridomermix, they can just move their progeny to higher ground. And I can imagine as summer draws on and it gets hotter and drier, they're going to move progeny back to the damper areas. So they can move back and forth and regulate and stay within that zone of hydration that best suits them. But how do little tiny ants like Theodols deal with this situation? I, they're so small, I'm not really sure what's going on with them. Notice the laughing tree frog in the background? Beautiful animal. Very lucky to have both here in South Australia. The ant you can see here is in the genus Theodol. They're a very small little ant. You might have just seen a Campanotus consabrina shoot past there in the bottom right hand corner. That one would have been probably somewhere near 20 millimeters. So these guys are really, really tiny in comparison. The thing that characterizes Theodol is a very unusual major worker. One just shot down the burrow hole then. They have an incredibly large cranium and it's of a sort of a, an unusual shape as well. Possibly evolved for blocking up the burrow entrance or it could be some sort of protective factor against predators or tearing up food. Don't really know, but very, very unusual. So hopefully down the track, I can have a closer look and see if I can figure out what they're up to.
This appears to be one of the many small species of aerodynamics. Impossible to tell apart unless you put them under a microscope and even then it's hard work. Very, very busy, very large numbers, typical of aerodynamics, and transporting progeny. These are the kind of ants that can easily get up into dead wood. They're small enough to get up there and store their eggs under bark and inside the hollows of trees and places like that. But there's a lot of embankment left. The water's not anywhere near high enough to really bother these guys at this stage. Well, here we have Campomotus consabrinus. I took this footage last night and they were a lot calmer. Clearly by this stage they had moved the majority of their progeny the alarm levels had dropped down somewhat in the colony and they were a lot more relaxed. I could actually do this footage without being covered in them. They were incredibly aggressive the morning, during the morning, and when they were really, really stressed out. I couldn't get anywhere near them. Incredibly pretty ant, very bold, strong colours, quite large, really impressive. That soldier there, that major worker, he's probably about almost 20 millimetres long, I'd say. And interestingly, I haven't seen this colour form before, but I think this is the standard colour form for them, which I didn't actually know, because I find another ant in the Mallee, and I'll show you a picture of that, that morphologically is identical, keys out to the same ant, but it's quite distinctly different. And it's also found in a different habitat, which tends to suggest to me that they might in fact be two different species. They might be ecological species. This is a species of ant that a lot of people will recognise. It's a green-headed metallic ant, or Rhytidopinera metallica. It's very common. Uh, it's especially common in urban areas, so people are likely to see it in their backyard. If you lift up a rock or a, you know, some sort of cover on the ground, there's a good chance that you'll find these under there, and often they'll have a little scrape area or a cleared area underneath something, and they'll store their pupae and eggs and larvae under it. I don't know if they have interconnected nests like Camponotus and aerodynamics they may not. So they may well be constructing a new burrow here. They may have moved progeny already. And when this gets too wet, they'll have to move up further again. I can't imagine it would take them too long to excavate a decent enough burrow to protect their progeny. So last of all, I just wanted to show you this species of Rhytidopinera. This is the intermediate size one. I don't know what species this is. There's no key for a lot of these right up here, unfortunately. What I think is happening, and this is purely speculation based on my observations, I've seen quite a few of these around the place now in this flooding area. And what I tend to think is that there's just lots of individual nests that are unrelated to each other from um, the point of view of they're not interconnected. I mean, genetically, they will be related but they're each independent, independently operating units or nests. And, and so probably what is happening and may well be happening in, in Metallica is that it just gets to the point where the environment's getting too wet, they know something's wrong, they move, they start constructing a new burrow or a new nest and they would move the progeny to it. That's what I think might be happening because I don't see any kind of complex integrated system that Camponotus and Aerodynamics have. I don't see that at all. And these are a, a far more primitive group of ants as well. They, they, they have, they've retained very ancestral characteristics. So it wouldn't surprise me if that's what's happening with them. So thanks very much for listening. I hope to give an update and um, I'll let you know what's happening with this flood because it's really been quite fascinating. And the next thing will be watching what happens as it dries up. I want to see what these ants do.